Hi guys, I'm going to do another bite-sized video on top-down characters right now. And the first thing you'll notice is that my map doesn't look like it's top-down. So the reason for this is it makes a little bit more sense when we're actually moving our character. So in Unreal Engine, Z is upwards. So as we move this, it becomes more positive. As we move it down, it becomes more negative. This is still the X and the Y goes backwards in the world. Originally, I was thinking that a top-down map should be twisted like this so that it's face down and we're moving in the world across these two axes so it's X and Y based but it doesn't really make sense when it comes to inputs so the first thing I'll show you is those inputs and why it didn't make sense before so in my inputs I'm using move forward and on the W axis it's now set to 1 which makes more sense because moving forward W should be positive and S should be negative. And move right, D is positive, which is still the same, and A is negative. So the next thing I changed is inside the top-down character, he's actually face-on now. And the reason I did this is because there are now actually no rotations on this character. The rotation is set normally, and before what I was doing was actually rotating this down 90 degrees, thinking, oh yeah, it needs to be top-down. But what you notice is, as I move this, uh, you'd expect that moving forward we'd move in this axis. But if we look at the right-hand side, as we move in the y-axis, we're actually becoming negative. So it's not it's not positive translation, which is what we thought might be the case. X still becomes positive as you move to the right, which makes sense as well. But if we leave this in this axis and think of the z-axis as up in the world, we move this up now and the Z becomes positive on the right hand side in the location values and as we move down it becomes negative. So this makes a little bit more sense. So we need to move this sprite so that it's at the bottom of our capsule collider. And the next thing that will have changed is the axes in which we're constrained to. So now we're constrained in the Y axis because we don't want to be moving backwards in the world. We only ever want to be moving on these two planes. Right, so another reason why this makes a little bit more sense is inside our update flipbook function, when move forward is positive, we move forward. And when move forward is not positive and it's negative, we move backwards. So that's another reason why this makes a little bit more sense. And this graph here is basically setting a flipbook at the very end. And I'm going to have a little overview of this just so it makes a little bit more sense for the students I'm teaching and for anyone else watching these video tutorials. So set flipbook is called right at the end here and it's selecting a set of flipbooks based on a enum which is the move direction. So I'll quickly open that enum. This enum has four options forward, backward, left and right and inside here we're using that to power a selector which selects forward, back, left or right flipbooks based on this condition into this selector and if this condition is true, the condition says velocity is more than zero, it uses this selector, which then uses the run, forward, back, left and right, based on which direction we're moving. And if velocity is not more than zero, this will return false and use this selector. And we're still using the same enum, forward, back, left and right, but we'll use our four idle animations inside this struct of animations that we set up. And if we have a quick look at that, we've got a structure here which is a set of variable flipbooks that we've set over on the right hand side and named accordingly. So we select those from here. And the way you split this struct open is you drag it into the viewport, right click it and split that struct pin and now you can start selecting each individual element from within that struct. So the next thing to discuss is how we're calculating this move direction. And we know that set flipbook is the last node in our graph for setting up the which flipbook to use but current move direction needs to be set first so we only ever set current move direction if there is an input so change the desired direction or the last direction if there was an input and the way we check if there was any inputs is to ask if get moving forward or get moving right is not equal to zero because if they're not equal to zero it must mean that in our settings project settings and inputs that one of these keys is being pressed because if they're not being pressed they're default to zero and if they are being pressed they're relaying one of these values 
So if any of these inputs, W, A, S, or D, are being pressed, change the flipbook. If not, just use the last flipbook and don't bother changing it. So the way we calculate which movement direction was being used is to ask if we're moving forward. Is moving forward more than zero, i.e. are we pressing W? Yes. Then use forward. If we're not, it falls down to this next selector, which asks, are we moving forward less than zero? Yes, we are. So we're pressing S key, which means we're moving backwards. And if neither of these are true, it must mean that moving right is either more than or less than zero. Because this question here says, are either of these not equal to zero? Yes. One of these two is not equal to zero. One of these two axes are being pressed. And we're setting this. So if it's not W and it's not S, it must be A or D. So then we just ask, is the axis for move right more than or less than zero? which will be A or D key, and then we set the direction left or right based on that, and then that pretty much covers it. We have this selection, and then we set a sprite at the end. But we only change the selection if we're pressing any of the keys. And back in the event graph, you'll see that the add move input for the W and S has now changed to the Z axis, because our character is now facing this direction. He's up in the world, and his camera is also changed. His constraints have changed. He's now constrained to the y-axis. And back in our world, our map is now set to a vertical plane. And everything makes a little bit more sense in terms of our project setting inputs, W being positive and S being negative for move forward. And the axes inside our controller relaying move forward as positive and therefore being forward, move forward being negative and therefore being backward. So that's a little overview of a couple of things I've changed to make a little bit more sense for everyone. And also makes the values make more sense as well. So thanks very much guys. Uh, I hope that helps. And we'll catch you next time.